really angry, um, really angry that anybody could be so negligent as to put these in innocent women's bodies. They wanted to change the way they looked and opted for cosmetic surgery, but now they're angry. Like hundreds of thousands of women around the world, they were given breast implants made from silicone that should not be inside their bodies. The implants came from a French company called PIP or PIP. It turned out its founder, Jean-Claude Maz, had been dodging inspectors in France, filling the implants not with biologically compatible silicone, but an industrial grade normally used to fill mattresses. Emma Benny paid £4,000 for her implants in 2009, and she told us they changed her life. About 3,000 of the 40,000 or so women in the UK who had PIP implants are thought to be NHS patients fitted after cancer surgery, but the vast majority chose to go through the operation for other reasons. I felt inadequate as a woman, um, you know, Things like going on holiday or taking my kids swimming and, you know, feeling really self-conscious about, you know, putting on a swimsuit, going into the water or, you know, even being married, feeling inadequate as a wife, really. Um, so I really, really wanted to get it done. Um, and I'm glad I did. She wants to go ahead with new implants, but wants the pit ones taken out. I wouldn't like to be walking around, you know, another day with something that's poisonous inside my body because it's a scary thought. Emma is one of the luckier ones. The implant furore erupted a few days before Christmas last year when French authorities recommended women should have their implants taken out because they had a higher than average rupture rate. Emma's private clinic, Nuffield Health, was the first to say it would remove and replace implants for its patients for free. Well, this allows me to remove her implant, and her implant is intact and is in pretty good condition. So Emma's in the middle of her operation. She's having her PIP implants removed and replaced with a different brand. And this is the one that's just been taken out. What the surgeon is looking for is to see whether there's been any rupture or any leakage. This one's fine. Jean-Claude Maz, who founded the PIP company, was arrested last month. He's since been charged with causing bodily harm and faces a separate fraud trial. But are there others who let these women down? What about the regulators? The warning signs had been there for years. The company itself had faced court action for at least a decade. French investigators, who've been looking into PIP for the past two years, reported last week. They found that French health authorities were sent an anonymous tip-off back in 1996. The regulator here in the UK is the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA. In 2009, lawyers warned the agency that they were receiving reports of problems, but it was not until 2010, when the French found unauthorised material in the implants and banned them, that the agency began testing the gel. There are now widespread questions about the way the MHRA goes about its job. The editor of the medical journal The Lancet, for example, has said the whole PIP implant scandal was an inevitable result of paralysis at the healthcare regulator. He says their whole approach seemed to be to do nothing until something goes wrong. Nuffield Health was the first clinic to offer patients free removal and replacement. They want to see a new registry and better regulation. Andrew Jones is a GP and their group medical director. He's concerned that more might have been done sooner. Well, providers were notified in the form of a medical device alert in March 2010, and that's when we took the decision to write to patients to call them in to see their consultants. Uh, it's clear in subsequent correspondence that we've had with the MHRA that 
there were issues uh, known about these implants uh, as far back as 2008. The MHRA says it did take up concerns in 2007 and 8 before the 2010 ban, but it was concluded that changes to reporting practices and an increase in implants sold had led to the increased reports. It also says The Lancet has misrepresented the work of the agency and that there is no clear evidence that rupture has been more frequent or clinically more severe for PIP implants. Back at Emma's operation and her surgeon has now removed her second implant. There's some leakage which used to happen with older style implants and is common with PIPs. This implant's got a little bit of gel bleed, it's, got, it's starting to get very slimy on the surface. Yeah. No one can yet know the long-term effect of this leakage of industrial grade gel. And that's even from implants that have not ruptured. What about the private clinics who made profits from PIP implant operations? A surgeon from Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital told us that in 2005, she was so appalled by one patient's ruptured PIP implant that she wrote to the Plastic Surgeon's Bible, the British Journal of Plastic Surgery, about the case. In response to that article, indeed a letter did come back, another surgeon saying, yes, that you know, this is a problem, I've seen more of this. And there must have been other people out there who were beginning to think there's a problem. The clinics that were putting in thousands of those, I think they must have been knowing that there was something going on. If, if they were following up their patients at all, they must have been aware. Alison Hope told us she's wanted implants since she was about 20. She had the operation in 2008, but now wants them taken out. Her clinic, the hospital group, wants her GP to arrange a scan to see if they're ruptured. If I have them replaced, whether I pay for them or not, I've got to sign a waiver to say that um, you know, I won't sue the company um, and I won't take it any further. We contacted the hospital group to ask why they're doing this. They have not responded. Her lawyer is one of a team bringing a group action against the clinics. Do you want to have the operation or not, in which case you sign away all your rights, um, or do you hold on and hope that at some point in the future somebody will pay for the operation to be done privately? It's a terrible position for the women to be in. And has the government done enough? The Health Secretary, Andrew Lansley, has insisted there's no need for routine removal, even as other countries have said the opposite. He now recognises women's anxiety and says all NHS patients and any woman let down by her private clinic can have them removed, though not replaced, on the NHS. Alison's lawyer, Richard Langton, wrote to Mr Lansley last month, suggesting a way to avoid the estimated £100 million or more it could end up costing the NHS. He's not had an answer. The main issue here is getting the insurance industry that insures all the clinics to accept their responsibility to indemnify the clinics and pay compensation to women so that they can get the implants removed and, repl and replaced. Emma's operation has been a success. Tests may have shown there's no risk of cancer from this gel, but many women have been left feeling less than reassured about possible long-term health effects and in a state of limbo.